time, this concept of the DREAM Act has been moving toward acceptance by both political parties, but moving very slowly. 14 years we've been debating this one simple idea that children should not be held responsible for the wrongdoing of their parents, that young people brought to this country and undocumented should be given a chance. And of course, two and a half years ago, President Obama did something. He did it at the request of many senators, including myself. We wrote to him and said, Mr. President, while the Senate and Congress debate the future of the DREAM Act, there are literally thousands of these young people who have no future in America. They don't know which way to turn. They can't get driver's licenses. They can't go to school with any government assistance. They don't have any basic idea what their future is going to be. And so the president said, here's what I'll do. I'll create this Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, the DACA program. And if these young people will come forward, if they will submit a filing fee to cover the cost of the program, if they will submit themselves to background checks, then we will give them temporary status in America. Temporary status in America. We're not making them citizens or declaring them legal forever. We're saying they can go to school and work without the fear of deportation. We estimate there are about 2 million young people in our nation of 350 million plus who would qualify for this DACA treatment. 600,000 have in fact registered in the two and a half years since the President's decision. DACA put on hold their deportation so that these young people who grew up in this country would have a chance. These are the dreamers. They're the ones that we've referred to over and over on the floor and tell their stories. Think about it. America's already invested in these young people. We paid for their education. We sent them to the classrooms and the schools. They stood there every morning by their desk, hand over their heart, praying, pledging allegiance to the same flag we pledged allegiance to this morning. They sang the only national anthem they have ever known, and they're just asking for a chance. Over the years, I've come to the floor to tell their stories because leaving the explanation at this point really doesn't touch on the reality of who these dreamers are. I'm going to tell another story this morning, and I want the record to show. This young man that I'm about to speak to about, uh, Juan Rios, is a person whom the House Republicans want to deport. They have said by their vote, by the amendment they put on this appropriation bill, they want Ron, Juan Rios to leave the United States of America. That's their goal. Deport the dreamers. All of those that have signed up for DACA and those who might sign up. That's just part of what they're trying to achieve, but that to me is the starting point that ought to be our starting point for debate. Juan Rios was brought to the United States when he was 10 years old. In high school, Juan really decided what his calling was, his military service. He became a leader in the Air Force Junior ROTC at his high school. Group commander and armed drill team captain rose to the rank of cadet lieutenant colonel. Here he is in uniform in high school. His dream, to attend the Air Force Academy. Of course, it's a dream that couldn't happen. He's undocumented. Instead, he enrolled in Arizona State University. In 2010, Juan Rios graduated from Arizona State University. What course did he study? A degree in aeronautical engineering. Some student. Here's a picture of him at his graduation. But after he graduated with this degree in engineering, he didn't know which way to turn. He couldn't enlist in the military like he wanted to do. He couldn't work as an engineer because he was undocumented. His talents were wasted. He sent me a letter at the time, and here's what Juan said. The United States of America is the country I want to live my life in, where I want to flourish as a productive citizen, where I want to grow old among my lifelong friends, and where I want to one day fall in love and raise a family. So what happened to Juan after DACA, where the executive order gave him an opportunity to have temporary protection and not be deported? In February 2013, after signing up for DACA, he interviewed for his first engineering job. Today, Juan is working as a mechanical engineer in the semiconductor industry. At the age of 27, he learned how to drive, bought his first car, 
After living in Arizona for 17 years, he was finally able to visit the Grand Canyon for the first time. Juan just sent me a letter last week. Here's what he said. I am fortunate to have found the opportunity to prove myself as a professional, to work in a place where I feel my contributions are valued and recognized. The past two years have changed my life in every way imaginable. I thank DACA. I think it is responsible. Responsible, it's a responsibility and a privilege and an opportunity for everyone who receives it to demonstrate that we as a community of dreamers have so much to contribute to society. Mr. President, Juan Rios is trying to prove to everyone that he is worth this investment, that he is worth this trust. He's done it. He'll continue to do it. So why in the world do the House Republicans want to deport Juan Rios? Why do they want to give up on this young man with his idealism, his determination, and his record of accomplishment? Why do they want him to leave the United States of America? Well, it's because he was brought here as a five-year-old, undocumented. And for that decision by his parents, the House Republicans would say, we have no use for Juan Rios. We don't want him to stay. There are so many other stories like this one. It's clear that DACA works for America. I've been to Chicago so many times and met with these dreamers. I know these young men and women. I believe in them. And I believe they're going to make a difference in this country. And I also want to remind my friends on the Republican side of the aisle, America is a nation of immigrants. We are, our diversity is our strength. We come to this great country from so many different places, and we bring so many different cultures and languages, religions, ethnic backgrounds, cuisine. We bring it all here, and we make it part of America's future. I know a little bit about this story because my mother was an immigrant herself, brought here at the age of two. And today I stand on the floor of the United States Senate representing the great state of Illinois. That's my story. That's my family's story. That's America's story. And there's something else I'd say to the critics of immigrants. Immigrants bring something special to America. Each one of these immigrant families took the greatest risk of their life to come to America. Some of them literally risked their lives to do it. Others came to a country where they didn't speak the language, knew very few people, and didn't have any idea what their future would be, but they had heard about this America place, and they believed that this was a better opportunity for them and their kids. I'm sure that's what brought my family to this country, my mother to this country, and I'm sure that's what's brought a lot of people. That is part of our DNA. Those immigrants, their courage and their determination to be part of America and its future really brings to this country an energy, that just can't be matched in many other places in the world. House Republicans would kill that dream, and they've shown us that by this horrible amendment which they've attached to the Department of Homeland Security appropriation. They think America's stronger if we tell Juan Rios to leave. I don't. It is shameless to play politics with the life of this young man and hundreds of thousands of others. It's just shameless to put Homeland Security funding at risk to punish Juan Rios for having been brought to this uh, country as a child. The House Republicans feel so, so strongly about deporting dreamers they are willing to hold up the Homeland Security funding bill. The House Republicans are telling the Senate and the President, deport the dreamers or we're going to shut down the agency responsible for protecting America from terrorism. I hope the Senate Majority Leader will reject this blackmail and I hope that in the spirit of the Senate where we came together on a bipartisan basis to pass immigration reform almost two years ago, that we will reject this hate-filled message from the House Republicans. For our part, Senate Democrats will insist that the Department of Homeland Security be funded and that the President have the authority, which every President has had, to establish his own immigration policies.